So that night, nobody else knew where Judas went. But the moment it happened, and Jesus said, Judas, what's in your heart? Do it quickly. The Bible says the rest of the disciples thought that Jesus had asked him to do something. It was only John that knew. This is the guy. Now, what I've always asked God for is, Lord, what does it take to be that close to you that the detail you are not willing to tell even the 12, you tell me? Now, I said that to say that we are not saying you should announce all the details of your life in the company. But there must be certain people in your life to whom the final minutest detail, oh boy, he knows you have a wife. He knows you have four children. But there should be somebody you can easily say to, man, you see that girl that started coming to church? My heart. My, my intestines. <laughs> what, what, one of my pastors recently, I mean, I just, I went to him and then we, were, we had a family event and He's, he just told me he was going to drive me. So I said, oh, great, great. Because I was in my city, so he brought his car, and then he was driving me. And then we, we were with his wife. Then he parked somewhere and told her, honey, can you help us get this, 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 and that? Then I knew that, you know I'm a spiritual man. <laughs> I knew there was something he was trying to tell me. He needed to get her out of the car. The moment she stepped out, he said, daddy. He said, there's a girl in church. For the last four weeks, the moment she steps in, I start to organize myself, and my salmon is shifting. When he said it, I laughed. You know, normally they expect that because you are the man, you are the father in the Lord. When they say, there's a girl in church. Eh? <laughs> you, you want to destroy the reputation of this ministry? I laughed, and I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, it's come on to man. Then I started telling him my story. By the time I told him my story of how many times I've had to war through that, the shame of it dropped. Then I told him, when your wife comes, now, tell her. So I sat in the car. His wife entered the car. Then he said, yeah, there's something I've been trying to tell you. I just told daddy, and he said, I should tell you. There's this girl. Ta, 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 ta. <laughs> As he was saying it, I was watching him die. But you see, that death is the necessity for the power of God to become manifest in you. You see, that process is what the Bible refers to in the New Testament as the circumcision. We are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus and we have no confidence in the flesh. This is the law of the brotherhood. That within the context of the brotherhood, there should be no darkness hidden anywhere. And it should be normal for a brother to walk up to you to look for the account of your life. You should honor the brother with an offering that he did. Nobody likes the dirty details of your life. True. For somebody to summon sufficient courage to look at you and say, brother, uh, you are, we are not comfortable with how you are around the sister. Uh, it's, it's becoming too consistent. Are we, have we heard the Lord yet? If we have heard the Lord, can you declare now so that we can know that that's the direction? You are, because you see, if we don't hold each other accountable, we will begin to create space for Satan everywhere because of the brokenness. Then, okay, so let me return back to where I started from. I forgot. I forgot there was something like that. So, when the Lord Jesus revealed himself progressively to the seven churches, you remember? I sat down, I studied, and I found out that those progressive revelations of who he is is what was established in that church by the time he was done with it. Because those seven churches were the church of God in, in progression, in seven dispensations, not in seven locations. So, where he started, to where he went to next, to the next phase of the church, to the next phase. So, in each of those phases, tonight is not the night. I mean, tonight is not the night. And, of course, it's not the last time I'm going to see you. That's the law of family. 
It's a law of family. If we go church after church, we can show ourselves within earthly dispensations. Why? He revealed what he revealed. That was established. He remained with the church forever. Now, if you ask me, the church is coming out of Sardis. We are making our progression into Philadelphia. And beside us is Laodicea. Out of Sardis, what is coming out is Philadelphia. Philadelphia is brotherly love. And beside Philadelphia is Laodicea. Laodicea is the church that will become too self-sufficient to see themselves the way God sees them. And the consequence is I will come and I will take your candlestick out of its place. That's why he said to them, because you are neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. That is the church that is possibly going to be left behind for the great tribulation. That's Laodicea. But you find out that the final revelation of Jesus Christ is in Philadelphia, the church of the brotherly love. Now he told them, he said, you are weak, you are with little strength, yet you have kept my word and you have not denied the faith. That's the only church among the seven churches that he did not say, I have this against you. It means that the perfect church will not look strong. In Luke, it will look weak. Yet, it will keep the word of God. It will keep the faith. And it is that church that will receive the final revelation of who Jesus is. So that that which Jesus has been building from the first church, the full beauty of it, that's what Ephesians 4 meant by till we come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a full stature. Now, I believe that this generation is the generation of the full stature. And, but, and according to Ephesians chapter 3, the full stature is revealed when we are filled with the fullness of God by love. It means that in all of our pursuits now, our energy should move into love. Let, let me say something that I'm sure will move you a bit. Jesus said of all men born of women, none had risen greater than John. And till tomorrow I still have a problem with Jesus for that statement. Because of the kind of people that live before John. Moses, Elijah, Elisha, David, Samson, Enoch. Ha! So let me now ask you, how many miracles did John the Baptist do? John didn't have a recorded miracle against his name. Not one. It then means that I can be called the greatest with no recorded miracle in my name. Now that's not an excuse for the absence of the miraculous. No. I mean on Sunday we took testimonies in church. A brother in our midst, his brother came back to life on the strength of the word of the Lord. I spoke the word on Sunday. I told him that blood disease is gone. And he has said to the Lord, Lord, send me word. I'm waiting for when pastor will go up. And I went up there and the anointing of the spirit came upon me. And the first case I called that day is I said, the Lord just said to me, that blood disease is gone. Three days later, his brother with the blood disease died. And they were prepping and packing to leave. They had called him to say, your brother just passed away. His sister was sitting beside the brother by the bed. While the doctors closed him and were going to, she said, the Lord said to her, open it and call his name in his ear. So she opened it. And she, no, she said, what? The, this spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you. It quickens you. The moment she said it, the dead man said amen. And he woke up. Do you understand it? Now, I, I only said that with you to say, we are not saying what we are saying for the absence of the miraculous. A ritualist picked one of my daughters last week. That's one of the testimonies we took on Sunday. A ritualist picked her 
and he was the one who was begging her not to harm him. <laughs> if you see the game, she's like, Bengele like this. Like, I had to even say in the service, I said the ritualist should have picked something that has body, like Buki. He went to carry this one, there's nothing. And she walked into his car to preach to him. She said the reason why she walked into the car, because she had determined that she was going to walk home so she can have communion with the Lord. Then the, the man came and parked in front of her and said, where are you going? Then she said, ah, is it the Lord out of his sovereignty, seeing that I'm, I was carrying a number of things, sending me help in a driver? She said, while the contemplation was going on in her heart, she looked into the car and she saw a bottle of alcohol in his cup holder. And that was her indicator. Let me give him Jesus. Then she entered. That's the neighborhood. She saw that he was in need of help. And then she walked inside there and she started talking silly. You know, she was just talking silly because she was looking for a place where they could start to engage. Then he goes, why did you enter my car? Put on his hood, shut the, this thing. Why? Of all people, why is it you that entered my car? Then there was no fear. The girl was telling him, I love you. Just... And he, no, don't touch me. Don't stop talking. Your spirit is too strong for me. He said, we don't care about life. I had planned that this would have stopped last year, but I had to come back to it. And it's you, of all people. Why is it you? Now I cannot kill you. I mean, we have record. I'm saying that we have recorded miracles. And yet, our emphasis is not in the miracles that Jesus does among us. Every day we're waking up and we're circumcising our hearts. We're saying, no, 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 let no evil live in our hearts. Love the brotherhood. Sent in the weak. Da, da. And we're preaching that every day. And when you walk into our company, you can literally tell the glow of God lives over us. The reason is because there's no space for bitterness. And peradventure, if that's all God brought me to give you, you know, and I'm not saying give you in the sense of you lack it, but give you in the sense of the fact that that which we have tested and proven, we can establish with you so that you can keep building according to the pattern of Christ. That way, nobody will be missing in our ranks. We can travel 30 years later and everyone who is sitting here is still accounted for in our ranks. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You are in Australia, you are accounted for. Canada, you are accounted for. If God sends you to Oman, you are still accounted for. We can literally flip our fingers and tell these people who began with us till today, this is where they are. I believe that that's the culture of Christ. And I believe that that culture will not only deliver the fullness of God, it will close all times. When the church is perfected in this brotherly love, all times will shut down. All that will be left is for Jesus to come and inherit his bride. Thank you, Prophet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Have you been blessed? I mean, such amazing. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know the question to ask again now. <laughs> such a blessing. And, and, and clearly, like he said, um, that culture... You know, one time I was sharing with some people and I told them that God started a church with the 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 P Peter movement. So the Peter movement, there were preachers, fishers that brought people in. Then when God brought them in, he introduced Paul, the apostle. So the preacher had done his work, then the teachers also showed up and perfected what God had brought in. But Jesus said in John 21, after he had narrated how everyone would die, and Peter was inquisitive, like you said, and asked the Lord, how about this one? You've spoken about everyone's death. This one you didn't talk about. Then Jesus said, what is it to you if it tarries till I come? And I like how John was so humble in his writing. He said, the Lord did not say he would tarry, I will tarry till he comes. But he says, that what is it to you if it tarries till he comes? And when I was meditating through that scripture, I came to realize how the Lord clearly used those definitions of this generation shall not pass. Yeah. And so people ask whether, you know, 1,500, 2,000 yeah. years, that generation is still alive. Yeah. But 
he was speaking of a contextual condition yeah. of a generation. And I noticed that, in other words, the life of God will be expressed in the church as John did with Jesus. Yeah. It's going to be a generation of lovers, mm. a generation, an army of mm. God's love. Mm. You know, that's going to really... So, I mean, I, I believe that it's, it's an ingredient that we, we need, yeah. especially on this side of town. And in, in, in general, in church today, because, you know, there's, there's the administration of church without the infusion of God's life. Mm. Uh -huh. And life, life is injected by love. Uh -huh. So I believe that it's, it's something that you've really, really, I mean, it's, it's worth meditating on. Absolutely worth meditating on. But I would like to um, further on just, you know, because of time, we know we have other opportunities. Go God is going to bring Pastor Chen Tong again to Ghana. Uh -huh. This one, he surprised me. So the next one, we'll ar arrange to bring him. Uh -huh. So, uh, um, in God's plan, he will live on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get to have him at um, um, Ephesus. It's called Ephesus. Yeah. Ephesus Gatherings. And uh, um, it started as a training ministry. I, I like to end by saying this. Now, in establishing the culture of love, how then do we break the system of um, you know, classical uh, man structures that have entered the church? That structure that has destroyed the ability to establish brotherhood. Yeah. And once you have man structures, um, the, the hum and, and, and you know that prophetic definition in the book of Genesis chapter 2 yeah. and chapter 3, when Adam now decided to hide himself, uh, you know scripture says in Deuteronomy 20 that you know the, the plant or the tree is man's life. Yeah. So Judges 9 also mentioned that the judges, the trees met and had a meeting. Uh, and so technically from scripture, when you take it from the prophetic interpretation now what causes man to hide is hiding behind other men so bible says adam was hidden among the trees yeah. so yeah. in other words the moment men begin to create structures it creates a divide from encountering god so the structural system now creates a certain um how do i call it organism which is the body of christ yeah. becomes an organization yeah. the movement now becomes a monument so people you know but at the same time, too, without the setting up of order, the bread can multiply. So there is, there is organic order against inorganic organization. Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't know how, how you could help us. So you, in certain you, structures, <laughs> leaders, because they are, they are volunteers, actually. Yeah, they are not yeah. yet. This person is not head of yeah, this. No, yeah. Not yet. So. In fact, I find this the healthiest way to build anything. Wow. The, you see, this structure... I'm glad that some of the people who started with me, I told you about my son, I'm a, they, they started with me. My wife was with me from the very beginning. When we started, nobody was naughty. You walk in, what you find to do, do it. Now, it's amazing because what we are about to bring down is an age-long devil. This week, I confronted this thing you're talking about. Because, okay, let me give you a picture. You see, Adulam and Ziklag are two different experiences for David. But Adulam is an easier experience than Ziklag. I'll explain it to you. In Adulam, men were discontent, disenfranchised. There was nothing good was about their lives. So they brought their lives because, well, there is, after all, there's nothing I can do with it. And that's how some of us give our lives to Christ. I mean, when we looked at ourselves, we just knew... Some people had something they can fall back on. There was nothing to fall back on. So God, take it. <laughs> you know. So Adulam was different. When they came in, David had the opportunity of teaching them God's culture afresh. Now, I hope you know that the beauty of the training of David himself was that God separated him from what is normal. So that David didn't even have a normal interpretation. While men were despising him and pushing him into the wilderness, God saw in him an opportunity to raise a person with a whole different culture. I will, I will show you the story. Just follow me. I'll, just, I'll show you the story. Right? David was really despised. He wasn't, you don't think that. David was not loved. He was, because for a prophet to arrive at your house and say, bring your sons. God said one of them is the next king. Then you assemble seven. And forgot one in the bush. And none among the seven said we are not complete. 
So, the father knew nothing could come out of David. The seven knew that it cannot be David. So, it was after the seventh, and Samuel the prophet was the one who asked somebody's father. No, you didn't hear me. Somebody's father. In Anasu, is there not any son left? I said, oh, that one. I'm telling you, no joke, when we get to heaven, you can confirm. I'm sure Jesse was thinking of his cousins. You know, maybe, ah, maybe it's the son of my brother, that one that I like. David was like that. Now, by the time David came, he had exercised himself in lions and bears. Now, please hold on. Think about this with me for a while, just for a little while. When David was narrating it to Saul, he said, your servant took care of his father's sheep. He said, when a lion or a bear showed up to eat one of my weak sheep. Now, David's anger was not that the lion came to eat sheep. It was that, which is the culture of lions? They isolate the weak one. When David saw that working, he thought this injustice cannot thrive. Did not have the time to analyze the strength of the lion or the bear. He just went at it. Because nobody would imagine that your son, who you sent to take care of sheep, came back with some blood stains on his shirt and the shirt torn. And then he said to him, Boy, where you come from? He said, Daddy, is the sheep now? I just. He said, So why are you staying? He said, Don't mind that lion. He said, Why a second? One lion came out from the bush to eat one. So I got angry and I charged that. You will start beating the boy before you think. Because leave the lion to eat the sheep. Come back home. In fact, strategy will have told you. Leave like three sheep behind. Drive the rest home. By the time he's done eating the tree, you have. I said all of that to say to you that God cultured David differently. And David didn't even have the opportunity to share his culturing with anybody. Because David couldn't have gone back home to report to his father that he killed a lion. Even something that was ordained for strength couldn't tell his parents he killed a lion. Something just turned aside and said, let me peace. He entered bush. Then he landed. <clears throat> Samson said, shh. Do you understand? Samson's problem is, don't shout. Don't trouble my parents. They're outside. <laughs> then the lion did mm, again. He said, before this lion we talk. So he pounced on the lion. The lion didn't come at him. Go and read the story. He pounced on the lion and tore the lion apart. Then when Samson finished, he cleaned his body and came out. Nobody asked him what happened inside there. There's a generation that will tear lions and it will not show on them. That generation is the generation you are sitting with now. I said that to say, those boys were cultured differently. Now, if they had trainers who trained David in shepherding, it would have undone. Don't worry, I know where I'm going to. Blessed are ye if this is about your first encounter with ministry. If you are coming from that which is organized, the tendency is that, as far as you are concerned, this ministry is not serious. Can we please organize this a little more? Let's know who we will meet at the gates. Well, then who he will point you to. Then how the person will be holding a placard and telling you you are welcome. Do you understand? I mean, if you are coming from that which is organized, it's very tough for you to enter that which is spontaneous and accept it. So God uncultured David from what was prevailing culture in his day. And when God uncultured David from what was prevailing culture in his day, it was the same culture that made that when he heard Goliath talking on the other side. While everybody, according to the culture of organization, was checking the size and how much skill it is going to take to bring down something this big, David was checking the covenant. Who is this uncircumcised minister? So David's studies were totally different from... So by the time people met David in Adulam, he now had his first set of trainees 
who he took the pattern of his study. That's why those guys became the mighty men they became. It's not after the order of men. It's after the, the order of the pattern that was given to David. Now, but Adulam is not the problem. It's easy to raise mighty men in Adulam. When you arrive at Ziklag, your victories are beginning to speak. The Lord is beginning to, is beginning to become obvious that he will take the kingdom. Then a captain of thousand comes with his thousand and says, we want to join you. Now, the problem with a captain of thousand coming to join you is the culture he brought. The real problem at that point is how to unculture this captain of thousand so that you can set him over a thousand. Because the Bible says if a man came as a captain of thousand, David set him over a thousand. But you see that between those two statements in the Bible, the experience of the unculturing to reculture. And I'm glad that we're saying these things now so that as we travel, I, I have told my people, if you follow the ministry of Jesus, you will find out that organization was created in the face of the circumstance to contain what God wants to do now. The reason is because if there's no purpose to organization, it becomes what Prophet Adam just said, the fig leaves where we hide. Ah, I will use a scripture for it. You know in First Timothy chapter 3, before he said, great is the mystery of godliness, right? He said, if a man uses the office of a deacon well, stop. Man, office, use. Three words. A man, an office, use. That means that the office does not define the man. By God's definition, the man should define the office. If we took you up today and we said, come and head the ushering of Ephesus Ministries, you don't automatically become the head usher. The title does not make you the team. Aha. You are still the same person, just empowered now by the Spirit of God, so that the idea is for you to take that anointing of the laying on of hands back to God to say, Lord, this office, how do you want this office to operate? But you see, this is what organization does. The office of the head usher. Several responsibilities. Number one. Church must be clean. Number two, arrive 30 minutes before. Smile at all. <laughs> Even when you are sad. Do you get it? So, organization, what part of things it does is it takes away your dependence on the Holy Spirit. Because we know what it takes. To be the chief worshiper. Highest. Assign who will lead worship. If the person is not doing well, you come and sing after the person. So, the man does not go to the God that has the office to say, Lord, how did you intend for this office to operate? Listen. In my spiritual experience, I've found out that no two ministries were created to operate the same way. It's part of the reasons why, for instance, if you enter into the ministry that I've been privileged to steward, you cannot tell what will happen when we can walk into a service and the Lord decides that we start with the message. And the message will be what will lead us to pray and then we'll finish by singing. And all of these things don't have time apportioned to them. <laughs> Till today. How many years later? 11 years, I mean. 11 years. So you can come to church and we worship for 20 minutes. And you can come to church and we worship for two and a half hours. And I'm not talking three years ago. Three weeks ago, we had two and a half hours worship. About four weeks ago, I had three hours stretch teaching. 
So you don't walk into church. You are familiar with that, right? Yeah, yeah I, understand. I understand. You can just walk in and then you will walk in at the point where you think that we should be praying. And you find me teaching. And you'll be thinking he will soon finish so that we can pray. Aha. Then after like two hours, I say, so before I start the message, then, then what goes, huh? Ah. I say, ah, no, no. I was just introducing. I say, ah, you people feel that infirmity, right? You, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. I know exactly what you're talking about. Do you understand it? Now, do you know how many people have sent to say to me that scientists have proven that the attention span of the average human being is 40 minutes. One day I had to say they should tell the person that the scientists should come to my church. They would disprove the things they have written. People think I'm bad. My spiritual father is terrible. <laughs> Pastor Chris? Pastor Chris kept, he taught us for 11 hours. 11 there was 30 minutes break only in between. Because like half the hall had slept. <laughs> and he kept going. He was just going. Wow. And at some point, I thought, are you not concerned that we are tired? <laughs> Pastor Chris? <laughs> 11 hours. He kept us there. And he was talking. He was comfortably talking. At, at some point, I had to tap on my pastors and say, is this man planning to die? <laughs> Must he say everything? <laughs> ah. Now, every ministry is patterned differently. The tendency in the flesh is to observe what we call successful, which is what they attempted to do to David when they took the armor of Saul and they put on him. Hear David's answer. David said, I have not proven this. It means God will not establish you in what he has not proven in your life. So if you were given an office, it's because now, God wants to place a demand on all the experience that he has worked in you to bring out a new kind of beauty here. But you see, where we used to hide our shame is, all right, we are the ushering unit. Everybody talking, wear tie. And we believe that by talking in and wearing tie, the job is done because we photocopied something somewhere and brought it in here. And the moment that happens, structure is the strongest cover for death I know in church. So when a system is dying, nobody is able to trace it because everything seems to be happening the way it happens every day. So many times it takes the undiscerning years to know that Jesus had left what we are doing because we have a structure. So what you want to do is you want to perpetually, let, let me give you three solutions. Number one, personally, take importantly, take personal retreats. Lord, are you satisfied? Ah. One of my friends that wrote that song, people in the world thought it was me. Lord, are you satisfied with my sacrifice? Are you satisfied with me? If there is any other thing that you want from me, I will give to you until you are satisfied. Lord, are you satisfied with my sacrifice? Are you satisfied with me? If there is any other thing that you want from me, I will give to you until you are satisfied. Create a system within that becomes uncomfortable when God is not having his way. 
less than three months ago, I had said to our, my resident pastor, you know what? Um, let, let's just do our best to make this particular service a bit orderly. Because I felt that there were certain things we needed to do at the end. And so you could tell that my resident pastor was under the pressure to keep to that instruction. So he goes up and, listen, it's a rule in the God Life Assembly. A service does not begin until God breaks through in the atmosphere. If we cannot feel God tangibly in the atmosphere, we will pray until he comes. When he comes, then we can start. If it takes two hours, I have told him before, and he has tried me on it. I told him, if it takes five hours for you to come, we will wait. And that culture has entered everything, including how we join marriages. Now, how you know it has become a culture is that I wasn't around for the last wedding that they joined. My resident pastor handled it. When the father of the bride was talking, because all of his children were in our church, even though he was a pastor in another church. Then he said, I wish I met the Chintok. He said, because I don't know what it looks like when he's not here. If this kind of presence that came in my daughter's wedding, he was not present, then I knew it had become a culture. Because right now, you don't need Chintok for the culture to be maintained. Whether I'm there or not, they know to insist on the presence of God. When the presence of God fills the atmosphere, then on the wings of that presence, we can bring the word of the Lord. That way it becomes easy for the Lord to obstruct what we also organized on paper and speak to the heart of his people. Even last night when I preached, exactly that happened. I kept saying, who took my message? And then they all laughed. Because I was in the heart of a message. I was building Habakkuk chapter 3. In his hands are horns of light, the hiding place of his power. That's what I came to preach. And then we, the Holy Spirit just took me. And then we began to heal things. You know how I knew it was the Lord? After the service, I received at least eight, nine text messages. Sir, I am the one that distracted your message. I needed that healing. So what God wants to do is more important than what we set out to do. Sometimes even when we feel led. You know, you can feel led. You can just think, oh, tonight, I'm sure the Lord will want us to talk in this direction. I'm preparing that direction. But when you sow, if you learn that culture, you will ride on the wings of the wind. You'll find out that. So that day, I was telling you the story of my resident pastor. He tried. He tried. The atmosphere had not broken. He tried, tried. Then he remembered that senior pastor said we should. So he handed over. And then somebody else was supposed to come up. I sat down in my seat. I said to my wife, where? In the God life I said. Somebody else is trying to take over. We have not perceived what God was doing. So I walked up myself. I collected the microphone. I stood there. I told them, rise up. We are going to pray now. I said, he's a devil that just walked in. I know him when I see him. He wants us to get acquainted with being organized and lose the culture of seeking God. And we didn't get here by being organized. I lost people for lack of organization. Many of them went, and after three, four years, they came back. Because they found out that our lack of organization was not a lack of structure. It was actually an insistence on God. If everyone becomes insistent on God, number one, everybody will go back with his sacrifice. Lord, did I usher well? The way we took the offering, did we take it well? I was speaking to my finance team. There are only like five or six in my finance team. And I told them, I said, you people think that your work is to collect offering, then come and sit down and count it. <laughs> you are listening. <laughs> you are listening. <laughs> You, you think that's your work? You collect offering. I told them. I said, you counted offering today. It was a million. Then you counted tomorrow. It was 700,000. You counted next tomorrow. It was 600,000. You didn't think to stop and say, Lord, what is wrong? Because organization tells you, collect offering, count it. Right. 608,700 naira, three kobo. And because you don't feel the burden of that office, I said your priestly responsibility 
is to aid us to supervise the prosperity of the people. Then I said to them, and it, it doesn't only indicate when the money increases. If the money increases only by fat envelopes, we have not yet prospered. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? It means one person is prospering. So the numbers can increase because one person is prospering. And so it does not give us a good feel of what's happening generally. So when you sit down in that treasury office, part of your responsibility is to pray, Lord, send now prosperity. If not, you don't qualify to count our money. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? How do they put a task in your hand and you are not measuring the advancement of it? You are just submitting report concerning it. It's because people become more conscious of how organizational we are than they are conscious of how functional we are. We should be able to say, we had 300 people. All of them were reef rats. The offering showed it. But by the constructive, consistent teaching of the word of God, we watched the same reef rats rise from taking a $30 salary into taking a $30,000 salary. Then we can say we are taking stock. That's, that's actually a finance team. When I finished with them, the finance team started having consistent retreats. They, they started having, nobody told them. You, so when a finance team for church sits down to pray and fast, what are they praying and fasting about? So how will the church not prosper? And I told them, I said, you have watched me for years. I, have, I, I told them, I said, you have watched me for years. We have done things in this church that are far bigger than the financial capacity of this church. I told them, I said, you know me. I have worked in faith enough to say to you, we will take that place. And everybody is saying, where is the we? Who, where is, who wants to take? By the time you are still discussing, you will turn. You will see me, I have finished buying it. And I didn't talk. Those who are close enough to me know. I will not talk about a thing because I have the money. I talk about it because I have instructions. I said, those are the patterns of faith you should see and do. For the first time, this meeting we are having in April, for the first time they walked up to me and said, Pastor, we have a budget. We want to trust God to raise this money. Don't give us anything. You see, so an office can provoke growth out of you. And yet, an office can hide the shame of your incapacities. Now, how you know that you are failing in an office is that you begin to use the power of the office, not the beauty of the fragrance of grace. So you start to compel people to do things that your life should have been the fragrance that will command their obedience. That's the reason why the Lord Jesus set the pattern. When he knew that all power was given unto him and that he came from God and that he was going back to God. He, loving his own, he loved them to the very end. When supper ended, he got up. He picked up a towel and a basin and he began to wash their feet. He asked me, how does knowing that you are the greatest, all power is given to you, you are coming from God and you are going to God, culminate into washing people's feet? It's because what he's saying is that the moment God gives you that kind of a position, the target will be to see how clean those who are your compatriots become. That's the best way to deal with organizational death. If not, you will create an organization and there will be death and debris everywhere. And yet the organization looks good. If we're looking from outside, this is pure. Everything is just straight. That's why, uh, let me say this one, sit down. That's the reason why you enter an average ministry and everybody is waiting for the hour of power when the man of God shall come. It's because everybody believes that the only person who has what it takes to operate God among us. So you tell somebody, come and lead prayer. 10 minutes, 20 minutes. He doesn't think lead prayer means draw down the presence of God. What he's hearing is, do, 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 do quick and pass. Let prophet them come and preach. 
One day I was teaching in a in a worship pass, in a in a in a singers retreat, and I said to them, you know, in the average church in Nigeria now, I don't know if it has reached Ghana. In the average church in Nigeria now, the entire worship session in a service is 12 minutes. The entire worship session, you do slow songs for three minutes, do fast songs for another seven minutes, then finish with another slow song in two minutes. It's already programmed. I go there to preach. I love them. They are part of the body. So I go to those places to preach. That's part of the reasons why they have to depend on emotionalism, not spirituality. That's why you have many ministries singing the prevailing heat raining songs. Because it has a sentiment it draws from people's emotions. Jesus, you love me too much. Oh. Ah, too much. <laughs> So people never truly walk the spiritual walk of the song. That's why we need the latest raining song. We need it. <laughs> Don't go there. Special number. In 11 years of running church, we have never had a special ministration of our choir coming to stand and say the title of our song today. That I would just dissolve them straight. <laughs> I don't even think to I just shoo. I just get up and say, well, it's, it's obvious the house of Judah is tired. Um, we need to let them. No. Your your assignment is one. I don't see the reason why anybody will sing special number at you. Except if it's not a song of the throne. If it's a song of the throne, everybody needs to declare it with their mouth. And you see this one that I travel to Ghana. If I make the mistake of crossing Sunday. By the time I return to church, I'll have songs to learn. Because almost every service we enter into, there's a new song from the Lord. Do you understand it? So if you stood in our congregation, except if you have followed our culture, 70 to 80% of the songs we will sing, you will have to learn it. Because they were born out of our own spiritual experience. And I did, I did not write 10% of the songs. It was 5%. It's not written by me. So you understand that it's a culture. So imagine that we followed what is written according to the books. We will have been doing special numbers and scoring people's songs. Only God knows whether we would have been able to impart the world the way we are imparting the world now. Because we are not only giving the world songs, we are birthing cultures. I've not done it. And I don't feel any less of a pastor because we have never sang special number. There's no time. When do you want to? Yeah, please clap your hands as our worship team. Then yeah, everybody's coming up. Then someone shout, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The title of our song tonight. <laughs> yeah. If you are seeking the glory of God, you, you don't have time for all of those things. You, you just want to see his presence fill the house. That's the only satisfaction you have. And it didn't start when I, when I started pastoring. When I was on campus, I headed the worship team of my fellows. When I came to the headship of the worship team, we did more prayer and Bible study than we did Riazas. In fact, they reported me to the president. I told the president, I said, if he has a problem with it, he should send a new head of department. But by the fifth month, the Lord is my witness. A lady went up to lead worship. And then she came down. Everybody had come back to sit because there, there was this vestry system. And I didn't see her. I waited for like an hour. I didn't see her. So I got up and I went to the bar. I found her on the staircase. She was crying. And then I said, what is it? She said, I sang for 20 minutes. He did not come. His presence was not in the house. That's why she was weeping. That was my most fulfilled day. I said to myself, if this is all I left for this fellowship, I have done it. That people now know that if you are given 15 minutes to lead worship and his presence didn't fall, you have wasted our time. You should go and cry. What is it about your voice that God hates to hear? Do you understand? It's 
you should cry. It's a reason to cry. So I, I tell you, we have traveled this far and this long without embracing other people's cultures. Now I found that people are coming to study our own culture. If not, you will refer to organization so that, eh, this, no, five minutes, this is. And then at the end of the day, nobody is taking account. Did the power of God come? Did the presence of God come? Was God in the atmosphere? Was the Holy Spirit permitted to have his way? When we become targeted at that, we will know what to do organizationally. One day you will come, and then we will all come to church, and seats are not arranged. And let me tell you, it will not cost us this, this organization. When we come, and the seats are, are stacked up, you will hear Prophet Adam say something like, who told you people? I was just perceiving today that we should not use chairs. Let's sit on the floor. And I just forgot to communicate it. Then you now know you are in a spiritual house. But you, you see, if you refer to the books every time, it just tells you that you are too lazy to ask God. And you will be obstructing. And I found out that the Holy Spirit has his way only to the degree to which we yield. If not, you will not obstruct any service. I mean, now I'm used to obstructions. He just comes, shuts down the service, pa, and takes it to where he's going to. On Sunday, we had visions breaking out everywhere. Then I went home. When I lay down to sleep, I had an angelic visitation that night. Then I woke up in the morning, and I said to myself, what if we didn't permit the Holy Ghost to have his way? The problem is you will never know what you missed. I told myself, I cannot do ministry otherwise. But you see, if I had done ministry otherwise, I would not have known what people could not experience. So fill the office. Don't let the office drive you. Grow into the man that becomes the definition of the office. So if a man uses the office of the deacon well, so the office is given to the man so that the man can use the office well. So I grow up and feel, now let me give you this final analysis. If Prophet Adam gets up today and says, well the Lord is saying that I should leave Accra, I should go to Canada. And one of you will now become the leader of this movement in Accra. Don't lie to yourself, the shoe is big. If they call your name, just die. Do you understand what I mean? Just, if they say you are the one that will now take profit, don't, don't lie. <laughs> I was teasing, you know, I left, I, I left Zaria to come to Jaws about six years ago. Zaria was the city everybody knew me in. But the Lord instructed. It didn't make sense to anybody. All of my friends just thought I was mad. But my signs were clear. And when my father, when my spiritual father knew that my signs were clear, because I sat down and I defended it. You cannot have a word from God and not be able to defend it. I mean, I sat down, I defended it. I told him, look at this, look at this, look at this. The Lord said this to me at this point, and I reported it to you. He told me this at this point. Now he has told me this. If you look at the symmetry, I'm not supposed to be here anymore. This is where I'm supposed to go to. When I finished, he said, go. He knelt me down, laid hands upon me, and we went to Joss. Now, Joss is not the story. Zaria is the story. The city I was living. The shoe I left, I called one of the most experienced ministry hands, and it was by the leading of the Lord. Everybody had thought somebody else was going to be the one who was like a closer son to me. But I knew no. So I called the, the man who I believed that, I we prayed for him. But the shoe was big. It's a big shoe. That's why I told you, you don't become it because they gave you the office. Your leg size does not change because I removed my shoe. <laughs> By the time the new pastor came, the church literally went down like this. But let me tell you something. In my, father, in my fatherly place, I never talked 
spoke to him about it once. Because I knew that it was not an absence of commitment. It was actually an opportunity to grow. So literally, the church shrank to the capacity he could handle. Now, I, I could have turned around and said, hey, you want to destroy what I started? I knew. And I was watching him give it his everything. People were not cooperating with him. It's not Pastor Tin Talk. And I have never built an idolatrous system where the man in charge is just the man. I've never done it. After three, four years, he had developed his own capacity. Because every time I spoke with him, I spoke with him in the light of the calling of God in his life, the hand of God, what I saw in him, and we kept going back and forth, himself and his wife, we went back and forth. Three years later, he began to grow into that capacity. Now, let me tell you. We built Tabernacle of David last year. I mean, our present church is a, is a 2,000 seater. You, you were in Tabernacle. We built Tabernacle. The moment we finished, he said, that anointing is upon us now. They got, I'm going to dedicate their building next week. He has grown in capacity. That now, when I enter the Zaria church, I enter that church as his father and the father of the pastors, not the father of the members. Because 70, 80 percent of the members, I don't know them. And they were not compelled to that branch because of my calling. They were compelled to that branch because of his calling. So if they remove the shoe and they put it in front of you, understand that that, eh, sorry. Wrong statement. Don't wait until they remove a shoe and throw in front of you to grow. <laughs> Prepare now like you are the one who is going to handle Ephesus tomorrow. Lord, the things I see in Prophet Adam, whatever it took for him to build it. Lord, I'm not your son-in-law. I'm your son. God does not, I, I have told everybody, if you get to the place where we got to, you will find what we found. You will do the things we do. It's normal. It will be wickedness for us to shut the door for you to get to God's presence. But you know, it's easy to be comfortable when you find a man who has paid his price. Today, undo that comfort inside of you. Tell yourself that we have not succeeded because Prophet Adam's ministry is, we have only succeeded if we can replicate what he is. And if you understand this kingdom, you know that replicating what he is does not make you equals. It only makes your stewardship a lot more effect effective. It now makes that if he travels, because he's going to be traveling a lot, even if they're not inviting him anywhere, you see Nigeria will be calling him like this. Every time he goes, he needs to be confident that the person who took it after him is able to feel the space. I said to my resident pastor recently, I said to him, you have grown greatly. Don't feel discouraged that when I was not around, you were not able to do at my capacity. Let me take you back to what you looked like four years ago. Then when he turned and he saw what he looked like four years ago, and he saw what he looks like now, even he agreed that he has grown greatly. So I told him, well, I get it. You are going to go and start a church for us in a different city. When you arrive there, you will now know that the boys of yesterday are the men of today. That's how we must all grow. Take that office. Take that responsibility. Whether there's a designation to it or not, take that responsibility and expand in it. For adventure tomorrow, we'll be talking about Ephesus in Atlanta and it's you we want to shoot there. It has to have the same culture, the same texture, the same spirit, the same power. It's in that day that we know that the day of the Lord is among us. Thank you, sir. Oh, my God. Can we speak in the language of spirit? Just blessed be the name of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Parabi kumbu mujinde bebe begmambanda sheko basa rabe guru buvali bisgila dusklevo vast pa bembo longi breka la bera batando lobo blessed be the name of god blessed be the name of god Parovela vekuste veni mitala basala bashanda ba ispabundo bo shababe sabadia sagadesa bra sofra fetolo momo thank you jesus thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord Thank you, Lord. You are the God most high. You are Jesus Christ. You are the only Israel. Oh, God most high. You are Jesus Christ. You are El El Only Israel, El El Yon, El El God Most High. You are Jesus Christ, You are El El Only Israel, El El Yon, El El God Most High. You are Jesus Christ. You are El El Only Israel. El 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 God Most High. You are Jesus Christ. You are El El Only. El 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 God most high, you are Jesus Christ, you are El El Only Israel, you are El El Only Israel, you are El El Only Israel, oh, you are El El Only, you are El El Only Eternally, you are beautiful. Eternally, you are glorious. Eternally, eternally, you are God. Eternally, eternally, you are beautiful. Eternally, you are glorious. Eternally, oh, eternally. We have a mingling with the spirit of excellence. Eternally, you are beautiful. Eternally, you are glorious. Eternally, eternally, you are God. Eternally, eternally, you are beautiful. Eternally, you are glorious. Eternally, oh. By Manama Sopra Kanayalayaba. Eternally, you are beautiful. Eternally, you are glorious. Eternally, eternally, you are God. Oh, eternally, eternally, you are beautiful. Oh, oh, eternally, oh, eternally. Eternally, eternally, 
You are beautiful eternally. You are glorious eternally. Eternally, you are. Eternally, you are beautiful. Eternally, you are glorious. Eternally, eternally. Bamoko Shabadin Telebekos. Father, after you described all the gifts and its power, it said, Convert therefore the best gift, but I show you a more excellent way. Aboko, Shema Keharius Taroba. You showed us a shortcut. You gave us a bridge. Momos Kaba, Keke Suka, Lemos Taba, Tekrefed Nelesh. And in all that 13th chapter, of the first epistle to the Corinthians, you give a shortcut in that discourse that this is the excellent way. The excellent way to convert. <laughs> so our conversion will not be covetousness that is full of selfishness. The excellent way to convert that the goal of prophecy, the goal of healing, the goal of miracles shall be because love must be dissipated. But your power comes on the streams of your words. And the entrance of thy word bringeth light and giveth understanding to the simple. Words have come as comforting news on from a far country. As it is cold waters that comes to a testy soul. Thank you for these words. Beyanjo shaibo osto gemi jajawu telabibas. No wonder the Hebrew says, Baruch haba Hashem Hadonai. Blessed be them that cometh in the name of the Lord. Bo ura saima sakumarat. Bo shavi fesikre kordo sarn. Aye gastunge bevire sabranta. We gain entrance. Entrance in this love culture. Entrance in the experience of God. Entrance in the truth of God's reality. We will not shortchange ourselves. We will stand tall for the truth. Lord, we receive the energy for pioneerism. The rigors of the demands of the spirit. Individually upon every member part, we receive strength. We receive strength to grow. That may grow up in him into all things. In love. May God. Is the bere beko rafastanaba. Shabako remesifrafakanana. Bemo sagata yakora bashaba. May the laws of the brotherhood of heaven. May the creed of Philadelphia come upon your people tonight. As them again or Tivadi prosopho. For every ministry represented here. Lord Imoshkari atalaba. Esombe kaladi ishkaba. We receive energy to build according to the pattern revealed in the mount. On this mountain, we receive patterns. On this mountain, we receive light. On this mountain, we receive wise heartedness, skill for wisdom, skill for the wisdom to build. Melo vendia sontre kalamana bondoske manjiko stile eviva ishemo koma mishavi eviva pa anda yadoke bele vendese pa woma bosali mikabo wastala ba ibsala gamo vrafa sa palasta ai sai kadata ba usoga taba astala ta pa samo hunte ika istala maita ba savakata e osabakata e ma sabata anka ba istabaka be ishalbata ai usega bata ya laibosa alaibosa 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 ikosta hekira bo andari kabandal ai imbokoro kata ikrasa matala for Laimokali in the Al Osta Prakana. 
Jumbunde Agaridi Gavabundelo Varasad. We have entered a new reality. Bob Jones of blessed memory said he entered heaven. And Jesus was showing him realms. He took him to level one, level two. And when he got to level three, he says the light was too bright. He couldn't see. And Jesus stood in front of him. And by Jesus standing in front of him, he could now see. So Jesus became literally his spectacles. Then he asked Jesus, where are we? And Jesus turned to him and said, this is the church of Philadelphia. The brightest amongst all. Then he said in Revelations, did you realize that to all the churches I promised the crown, but Philadelphia already had a crown. So I said, take heed that no one taketh your crown from you. Because Philadelphia is the perfectness of the bond of Christ. Father, tonight, thank you for words of light. Thank you for your servant. Thank you he obeyed. Thank you we had an opportunity to sit with him. That not all of us would have had a chance to travel to Jaws. Perhaps we couldn't even call him online to doctor or tutor a session for us, but we had him physically so we could ask such questions. We pray the Lord, you've taken your man's servant ahead in the experience of the God life. We pray in Jesus' name, the Lord, we will learn to wait. We will learn to sit still. We will learn to become masters of the wind. That wind that listed wherever, blow it wherever it listed. So that we become they that are led by the Spirit of God. We pray tonight that, Lord, these words don't fall to the ground, but they begin to sprout an intensity from our rising up, from our walking in the day, from our work in the office, from our dealing with people. We will wait for the wind of the Spirit that God will do for us as a father will do for a child because we waited for the Spirit. Glorify your name in our midst. Thank you. We pray for everyone online and we declare the grace of God, the strength of God, the ability of Christ released on us. We ask Pastor Chen Talk to finally pray. Bless us. If he's led to sing, whatever it is, just bless us as we, we end this session. As he's led. Amen. Lord, thank you. You have drawn us into a place. You have opened the door for it. And every door you open, no man can shut. Let this experience become a perpetual continuum, a steady advancement. Because I see in the spirit, I see it, it's, it's like a staircase entering into an endless vastness. And I declare in the name of Jesus, this door is ministered, opened unto us. We enter into this continual, perpetual ascendancy in God. In the name of Jesus. And as we ascended, I am seeing clearly that weights are falling off. Baggages are going away. If there be any issues of unforgiveness or pain or strife that you have tried in the natural to let go of, I declare that you have been set free from it. This advancement makes you free from it in the name of Jesus. We declare in the name of Jesus that your eyes will consistently see light. Oh, thank you, Father. The blindness is broken. Our eyes can see. Our eyes can see. Our head will never lack oil. Oh, blessed be your name, Father. Blessed be your name, Father. Blessed be your name, Father. You are the Father of all lights. In you, there's no variableness. There are no shadows of turning. You are consistent in all your ways. Lord, we ask that that consistency be found in us. You see, I see the Lord taking root in people. I see him. He's taking root in people. He's taking, the Bible says that you've been rooted and grounded in love. The Lord is taking root in people. There, there are certain things that the root of bitterness cannot hold anymore. The root of humanity cannot hold anymore. We make our transition into divinity by reason of this. Blessed be your name, Father. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. You are highly lifted up. 
There is no one like you. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Yeah. You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Say it again, you are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, you are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you are highly lifted up. There is no one. Hallelujah. As he tears down every mindset, tears down everything. Oh Lord, you are highly lifted up. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, you are highly lifted up. There is no one like Hallelujah. You're the crown of all the ages, the desire of the age to come. I worship you today. You're the crown of all the ages, the desire of the age to come. I worship you. I raise your banner high. I raise your banner high. High above the heavens. I raise your banner high. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to. I raise your banner high. I raise your banner high. above the heavens. I raise your banner high. Glory to the Lamb. Say, I raise your banner high. High above the heavens. I raise your banner high. Glory to the Lamb. Say, I raise your banner high. High above the heavens, I raise your banner high. Glory to the Lamb. You are the crown of every age. Desire of the age to come. I worship you today. Your name is Jesus, and you're the crown of every age. The desire of the age to come. I worship you today. Lord, we compel the powers of the age to come. We compel the powers of the age to come. By this conformity that has happened here tonight, we compel the powers of the age to come. We declare in the name of Jesus that the age that the church has not yet entered into, we gain entrance by your spirit. That age, we receive that grace to pioneer an age that out of this city and out of the nations of the earth, you will bring the compulsion of the power of an age to come. Blessed be your name, O oh God.
Blessed be your name, O oh God. We call it done. I, I hear the Spirit of Christ say, this is a beginning of beginnings. It is a beginning of beginnings. In this backside tonight, oh, the ordination is a beginning of beginnings. Let an altar of an everlasting remembrance rise in this place. Lord, remember tonight and cause that you find an altar that will last eternally. No generation will turn away from it to the left or to the right. We compel our children and our children's children to serve our God. We raise an altar of an everlasting remembrance. <laughs> and by this altar, we ward the rising darkness. We stay back the tide, not in Ghana. We stay back the tide, not in Ghana. In the name of Jesus, we stay back the tide. The Lord has a people here. Ghana is preserved. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, Africa was designed by God to resist the tide of darkness. And we declare tonight, Lord, in this place, Zion is come. <laughs> and the Bible says, saviors will rise out of Zion. And they will judge the mountains of Esau. The mantle and the right to judge is come here tonight. It is come. The Lord has found for himself a people. We bless you, our Father. We bless you. And Lord, we thank you for your servant. Thank you for the obedience and the brokenness that has brought us here tonight. Lord, now I see the reason why I came. Because I see you, sir, just lying like a, a sacrifice on the altar. I see you, the way Isaac was laid by Abraham. I see you lying there. And the Lord has said to say to you that he has found a sacrifice acceptable in you. And by you, he will redeem nations. This place is spared. This place is spared. Thank you, Father. There's something called the beauty of holiness. Many of us will begin to encounter it. There's something called the beauty of holiness. It's a dimension of God. When he walks in, you will know. You will stand in awe of him. You will think that you are marveling, but you will not know you, were, you are being compelled. It's a worship that comes without words. It's the beauty of holiness. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence with us. Who are we that you are mindful of us? How come every time we lift up our voice, you respond so quickly? We acknowledge you. We acknowledge you. Lord, thank you. You are also creating the bond of family here tonight. Thank you. It is perfected. It is done. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen.